This is Ellie coming to you from Australia, also known as The Future. Hello to everyone who's seeing me for the first time and hello and welcome back to all of my wonderful subscribers. Some of you who are particularly astute have commented that a recent thumbnail on one of my videos uh, included a picture of a man who didn't seem to be discussed at all in the video. And that man, uh, his name is Simon Durante Day. He is a British born man, 56 years old, who currently lives in Queensland, Australia. Now you're so clever to have picked that up. And I can't remember which video it was, but I think it was um, one of the blitzes that I, that I did or multi question videos. Um, the reason why this has uh, occurred is because I was asked in my Ask Ellie video by someone to do a reading on whether or not this particular fellow, Simon Durante Day, was the um, love child of Prince Charles and Camilla. Oh, sorry, Prince King Charles, King Charles III and Queen Camilla, pardon me. I'm a bit behind the times and it's, it's really hard to shake off old habits. Anyway, um, I did a three card spread and I, I was going to include it in the video, but it was far too simplified and I wasn't sure that I entirely trusted my interpretation of the outcome. So after I had loaded the video, I took it down, took that section out because you know what I'm like. I'm a, I'm a little bit um, OCD. <laughs> When it comes to my readings, I like to feel as though I have a real confidence in what I'm saying to you. And uh, I'm not always going to be accurate because I'm human, therefore I'm flawed. However, I really try to do my best. And I kind of, I had loaded the video, I was off doing whatever it is I do, and I was nagging at me and nagging at me. And I thought, oh, you know what, I'm just going to put myself at rest here and I'm going to take it down, take that bit out and then do a full reading. So that I know that I'm confident, I'm confident about how I've interpreted the reading. It just didn't feel as though I had done a good enough job. You know how it is? Anyway, so it's really hard for me to settle when I feel as though I haven't done my best in, in something, in anything. Which is why I'm always so tired and always running late for everything. It's because I'm trying to get too much stuff, too much stuff done and I'm also trying to be way too thorough. It's a character flaw. It's a character flaw. But anyway, so I've come back and I thought I'm going to do it as a cold case reading because you know Simon Durante Day was born in uh, 1966 that sounds kind of cold to me so let's take a look at him Simon Durante Day was born in Portsmouth in England in April on April 5th 1966 when he was around about eight months old he was adopted. His actual birth heritage is not confirmed. He was adopted by a couple whose names are Karen and David Day. He lived in a semi-detached home where him and his parents lived with, or his adoptive parents, lived next door to his grandparents. And his grandparents were Winifred and Ernest Bowden. Now, Winifred was a cook uh, for the royal family and Ernest was a gardener. I'm not clear on which royal household each of these um, grandparents served. I've looked at a variety of different online sources and it ranges between um, working with the Queen and Prince Philip and also a, an undetermined royal household. So I'm not going to make an assumption as to which royal household um, Winifred and Ernest worked for. They met, they fell in love, they married, um, and then ultimately, their, one of their children who was married adopted Simon when he was eight months old with their partner. Now, Simon does now live in Queensland, Australia, but he, in around about the mid-90s, um, went on a bit of a search to find out about his birth parentage. He has come across a tremendous amount of evidence which he believes links, uh, he believes, points to the fact that King Charles and Queen Camilla, formerly Camilla Parker Bowles, could very, very likely be his birth parents. Now, I went and had a look, given the date of Simon's birth, I went to have a look and see what 
the then Prince Charles and Camilla Parker Bowles were doing at around about the time that Simon was born. And the the uh, Commonwealth Games was taking place in Melbourne, Australia in 1966. And Prince Charles actually made his very first visit to Australia during that time to represent the royal family at the Commonwealth Games at the age of uh, 15 to 16. I think he was 16 at the time. He actually spent two school terms um, attending, I think it was Geelong Grammar in the state of Victoria, which is the state that I live in. At that very same time, so he was away from England for a couple of terms, so approximately six months, perhaps. At the same time, Camilla Parker Bowles uh, is claimed in, um, when I go back to take a look at what she was doing in 1966, uh, the information online indicates that she met her soon-to-be husband, uh, Andrew Parker Bowles, in 1966. They didn't get married for a few more years, but it's claimed that she she met him and fell madly in love with him in, um, in 1966, despite the fact that Andrew Parker Bowles was significantly older than her by at least a decade, and also that he had um, a quite a notorious womanizing reputation. So this is really kind of interesting. When I think back to the 19, 1960s, uh, and I think of, you know, your stereotypical manner of dealing with what could be an illegitimate uh, pregnancy or out of wedlock pregnancy, which was so very taboo back in the 60s. How would uh, families that were very concerned about the family reputation deal with that kind of potential scandal? And I anticipate that it's quite normal that they would separate the two young people involved send them off to different locations under the guise of some kind of perhaps official, uh, important transfer of schooling for a period of time, say for the boy, and also find a husband for the girl who has, you know, in that old fashioned way kind of been ruined in some way. And it may have even been acceptable to marry her up with a fellow who might have a reputation of his own, because then if she is a pretty young girl who has a bit of a past and he is a much older man with a bit of a past, then they might be forgiving of each other's indiscretions and find some kind of happiness and also make a very convenient match. That sounds like something that might typically happen. So that kind of piqued my curiosity. Um, there was a period of time after that, where things kind of turned a little bit. It's been reported that in the early 1970s, Andrew Parker Bowles had a secret intimate love affair with Princess Anne, who I think was the is the Queen's sister and probably closer to his age. Camilla Parker Bowles had uh, been aware of Andrew Parker Bowles' discretions in the past. At least it would indicate that from the reporting that I've seen. And she had actually lashed out and did things like vandalized his car and things like that in anger, according to the reports that I've seen. On this particular occasion, her retaliation was to have what is claimed to be an affair with Prince Charles and declared at, at around about that time that she was in love with both um, Andrew Parker Bowles and with Prince Charles and that she she loved them both but she did accept Andrew's proposal and ultimately married him in 1973. Now Simon Durante Day has been adamant for the past 10 years that his research um, demonstrates that he is um, the love child of Charles and Camilla and he has been writing to the Queen and um, activating, he activated at least one lawsuit, which was ultimately rejected uh, and is planning now to do another lawsuit, actually to do a DNA test. But he has been writing to the royal family. He's been very public here in Australia. News of him and interviews of him have gone as far as um, the UK as well and uh, around the world. And he's been adamant for the past 10 years that he believes that he actually is this um, love child that was born in the 60s to an infatuated Charles and Camilla when they were very young. There, He's received no response from the royal family whatsoever 
and um, despite the fact that he's been pretty consistent in his allegations. Simon is now married to an, indigen to an Indigenous Australian woman. They have children of their own. And he claims that what actually sparked his interest in looking up his ancestry is when his um, mixed race child was born with blue eyes when he has brown eyes and his wife has brown eyes they found it to be so curious that's what actually sparked his investigation and took him down this sort of rabbit hole of royal family intrigue now he believes that um, his grandparents were chosen due to their exceptional reputation working with uh, the royal family they were chosen um, to be the grandparents of this um, child out of wedlock and their children were nominated to be these um, adoptive parents and that he was raised in such a way as to remain close enough to the royal family but separated enough to, to not really have a direct link, a sort of an indirect link. He also, Simon also claims a couple of episodes of things happened when he was a child that he believes um, strengthens his perception as to or the validity of his perception that that actually he is a member of the royal family rightfully so in fact he would be the firstborn son um being older than uh, prince william i'm i'm double checking to make sure i've got the right titles now because i don't actually remember what anyone's called anymore i'm having trouble even just saying prince charles the third because it's all such new information but um King Charles III, you see what I mean? I'm having trouble with, with all the right titles. So if I get the titles mixed up, I'm doing my best. It's just that it's such new information, it's swimming around in my head. But um, he would he's older than um, William and Harry, and that would mean that um, he would be the rightful heir to the throne. So if it turned out that he actually was Charles's son, then he would be the rightful next king of England rather than William. Now, this potentially could really upset the entire monarchy and succession of the throne in Britain. Um, Simon is not, however, the first person to seek DNA from a royal and possibly um, have an opportunity to prove his alleged birthright. A similar case actually took place in Belgium not that very many years ago. A woman, an artist by the name of Delphine, um, actually won her right in court to get a DNA test to, to prove whether or not she was the um, love child of, I think he's abdicated his throne now, but at the time he was actually King Albert of ben Belgium. Um, he, King Albert of Belgium, now abdicated, um, had a long-standing affair with a woman who's ultimately had a child, a daughter, and that daughter was proven through DNA test after many protestations by the king um, and refusals to do DNA and denials of um, having any birth link or, or um, family link to her or DNA link to her. It was ultimately proven that she actually was his daughter and she has now received her title and um, an inheritance and is set up for life and um, this became worldwide news when it happened it actually was confirmed not that many years ago so there is a precedent out there in Europe um, Simon wants the same kind of test but for Simon it's a little different because with Simon this would make him the rightful heir of the throne and so personally I'm not actually sure that um, it, it's going to be as easy for him. I think that there might be roadblocks in the way because if there was a judge that finds in his favour, that judge has the power to unseat the current first in line or next in line for the throne. This is a pretty big ask of a judge to actually sort of knock down the monarchy succession plan. So um, that's interesting. I was actually just about to, to mention Simon actually recalls a couple of things in his childhood where he believes this is evidence of him um, being a, potentially a member of the royal family. He remembers as a young child, um, at about the age of five or so, being um, taken to an address in a kind of a posh area and playing at a table with some toys while a woman that he didn't know and a man in military uniform watched 
watched him and talked about him. And he actually remembers the man making a comment about how the two, the man and the woman were buggered from now on because of something to do with him, which he didn't understand the context at the time. He just remembered the language and the fact that they had mentioned that there was something about him being there that had buggered their lives up. And he believes now that it's it was um, the then Prince Charles talking to Camilla about how their life is never going to be the same now that there is this person with you know that 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 they have created out there in the world despite the fact that he is living um in a completely different life he also um says that throughout the time that he's been looking for his birth parents he has hit a brick wall he has not been given the same information through um, ancestry sources and official documentation that most people are entitled to receive. He actually has only received, you know, letters denying him access to certain things or saying that they that he doesn't have permission to find certain things. And so instead of actually being given the same privileges as other people who don't, um, who, who go looking for their birth parents, he's not been in a position to get any of the information. He finds that really suspicious. He also makes a couple of claims that I found a little bit peculiar. He said that he believes that he was born with blue eyes and that his eye color was changed at the age of eight. People with, with scientific knowledge of how eyes work and the kinds of uh, medical advances there are have come on uh, from time to time to say that they have no idea what he's talking about. They don't actually think that would have been possible, particularly in the early 70s. He also claims to remember that as an episode, uh, as a child, there was an episode where he was strapped to a chair and his teeth were ground down to change the shape of his teeth. And um, I found that to be really peculiar too. So I don't know uh, what this means. I do believe, however, that if someone really believes something to be true, they can um, manifest what might be a false memory about it in their mind which they also then become really convinced is true. Or maybe I just don't know enough about teeth and eyes to be the judge of anything like that. But it, I did find those two claims to be very peculiar. When you actually see Simon being interviewed, however, he comes across as a very credible, sensible person. With the exception of those two claims about the teeth and the eyes, everything else sounds really credible. But there are... There are things out there we can't explain and um, we can't judge an entire person based on those two things. What I did, what I did myself, however, is I had a look at the, some of the photos that he submitted and some of the video that I've seen of him to look at similarities, see if I could find any similarities between Charles, Camilla and Simon Durante Day. And what I was able to observe myself, and I'm obviously not an expert, is that his teeth are not particularly uh, dissimilar to Charles's or even to William's. I mean, Harry's teeth are a little bit different than the other two. And Simon's teeth do appear to be a similar shape to William's and also to Charles's. His hairline seems to be quite different to his, to, I was going to say to his father's, but we don't know, but to Charles's. His nose might be a little bit similar to Charles's. Uh, his facial, facial shape might be kind of similar to Camilla's. But what stands out more than anything is that Simon has a very typically British male appearance. And so if you were to ever go to Britain, you might actually find um, on any given day out on the street, men numerous men who have a similar kind of appearance and you might find that their ears are the same or their lips are the same or their eyes are similar or their eyebrows or their cheek um, bone structure or something like that and so simon doesn't look like a carbon copy of anyone from the royal family but he also could get away with being a member of the royal family based on his appearance as well and so the fact that he's produced numerous numerous photos to show what he believes are similarities with members of the royal family i think a lot of people in britain who have a very similar kind of appearance 
could do something similar. I think that the timeline issue, the timeline issues of Charles and Camilla being in significant places in 1966 is, is far more interesting. And also what I find is some of the pushback that Simon has gotten from the media as well. For example, um, the Australian media has been relatively sympathetic when it comes to Simon Durante Day. The Australian media, you know, they have nothing to lose. And um, Australia is known for providing um, more of a harsh criticism towards the royal family than British media does, because the British media is sort of beholden to the monarchy in, in a kind of a way. And so in the same way that any country doesn't sometimes disclose all of the sensitivities within its own country uh, through the media, some foreign media organizations will sometimes be able to tell you more about your country than than you're able to hear on the inside. And it's no different here. We've heard in Australia about many of the potential scandals in the royal family, whether they're true or not, I don't know. We've heard more about them here than you would hear if you were living in Britain. And so this is not unusual. But there was a, telev a television interview um, that um, actually demonstrated the fact that the, the media might actually not be entirely honest or that he's getting some roadblocks, which kind of makes me suspicious. There was an episode when there was a debate over um, Simon's grandparents. And Simon had claimed that his grandfather, Ernest Bowden, had been awarded an Imperial Service Medal um, by by the royal family and by by the palace and this was debated as being um something that never happened and actually it was presenter philip schofield and royal biographer robert jobson criticized simon um on a tv interview in the uk saying that there was no evidence that ernest bought, bought ernest bowden had ever received any kind of service award Ultimately, Simon actually provided evidence of this award by providing a photo of the actual award that was displayed at his adoptive parents' home. And then uh, it was researched by his fan base and people on Facebook and things to be ultimately true. And um, the fact is that Ernest Bowden was featured on a list of 1963 prize recipients according to government documents but the media hit back initially and said no nah, it's not true and therefore if that's not true everything you're saying is not true this made me suspicious because it made me think well hang on a second if it wasn't that hard to prove and even people on facebook could prove it just your average you know super sleuth online then how come the media couldn't find it when they have all the extra tools available to them or was this sort of some kind of a, a method of trying to discredit him in order to cre create a kind of a cloud of distraction and things like that? So this has kind of got me interested. The story appears to have two sides. Some, some of what Simon says seems to pan out. He doesn't look unlike members of the royal family. He comes across as someone who genuinely believes what he is saying. And all he wants right now is he wants the right, he wants to have an opportunity to compare his DNA against the DNA of uh, the king and the queen. And there is precedent out there that this is something that has been achieved by Delphine in Belgium, who ultimately now is a princess as a result of her research. I'd like to do a reading on Simon. I'm not going to ask the cards about um, the DNA test or whether or not he is the son of King Charles and um, Camilla, the Queen, but I'm going to do the full reading and let's just find out about Simon and then we'll ask some follow-up questions. So we're looking at Simon Durante Day, 56-year-old, 
born in Portsmouth in England, later migrated to Queensland in Australia, uh, married with children, who currently is fighting for his right to get a DNA test as to whether or not he is the biological child of the now King Charles and his wife Camilla. Let's just look at Simon's mindset, whatever the cards have to tell us about him, and then we'll ask, I think, two crucial questions after that. I just want to find out more about him first. So we're looking at Simon Durante Day. We have the signifier and the challenge card. Conscious thoughts, subconscious thoughts, the past, and the short-term future. This is an uncanny card to have in the short-term future. Okay. So as a signifier, we have the Four of Pentacles in reverse, and it's challenged by the Ten of Swords. The Four of Pentacles in reverse is about being afraid to leave your comfort zone. It can be about being really stingy, um, and really, it's a it's a hoarding card. It's about keeping things very close to you, being afraid to kind of go out there and having a paranoia about losing something that's yours. There could also be um, a, a delays and a very and a late payment of something with the uh, four of pentacles in reverse as well. The ten of swords is about um, endings and beginnings. And so like the beginning of a cycle or the end of a cycle. And also um, there's death that could appear here and also potentially defeat as well. This is a person who's holding on for dear life. Um, is the delay and late payment. And this um, sort of desperate holding on to prosperity that appears with the four of pentacles in reverse. It is kind of a, almost like a, a very blunt way of describing what I saw Simon say in an interview with, um, I think it was Channel 7 in Australia, where he said that mostly he just wants to know where he came from. And that was what started his ancestry investigation. But the fact that he kind of feels that he's been fobbed off and ignored and the queen never responded to his letters and now she has passed. And his children may indeed have a birthright that they can't um, get access to. And that he also feels very slighted by the fact that he might very well be the successor to the throne. Um, it's an overdue payment of his birthright. And that could be this year. After 50, 56 years, it's an entirely different life that he could have been living, that he could have been giving to his children um, if it had been paid on time. And that is sort of a, a very blunt, um, the cards provide a very blunt explanation of what he explained in kind of that way. What challenges him here is a cycle of some kind and this could end up being the Queen's passing. It could also be um, this, Im this defeat that is coming his way where he may actually lose the opportunity to, to make more legal claims. I'm not really sure. But um, there's a difference in the cycle that's coming here that presents a challenge to him. So um, it could be now that Charles is king the walls are higher and more difficult to scale because there he has even more protection than he would have had as the Prince of Wales. So I think that this is going to be an uphill battle for Simon either way, or he's facing what appears to be a really uphill battle in his life. Uh, it, the most recent um, 
interview I saw was about three days ago with Simon because he was talking about how the Queen had already passed. In fact, I saw two interviews with him where he was talking about how the Queen had already passed. And so this is very, very recent footage. He comes across as being extremely genuine, like he really believes what he's saying. But it doesn't mean he's right. And it also doesn't mean he's going to get his way. I think the fact that what he threatens in, in his very existence is the succession to the throne. It's not the same as, as wanting a, a, a title as a princess, the way that Delphine um, in Belgium has managed to get her title as a princess. She's never going to be queen. She's just one of the royal relatives and she's proven it now. This is different for him. He has a much higher wall that he has to scale. And there are less people out there with uh, influence who would be willing to help him. Okay. And so he's very conscious of that. But this is something that is very forefront in his existence. Okay. On a conscious level, we have temperance. And temperance is all about um, balance, chemistry, and getting it right. Now, this is, this is a, sort of a way of describing what he wants. He wants to get everything right. He wants, he wants the truth, I think. And um, he has even said that in interviews where he, it's not that he, he, doesn't want to, he doesn't want anything if he's not entitled to it. He wants to know the truth. And what's curious is, you know, I guess there are two sides to the argument. You could think to yourself, well, why don't they just give him a DNA sample? Because that will put the whole matter to rest. But actually, it's a little bit like that saying, you know, don't negotiate with terrorists. It's not that Simon is a terrorist. It's just that there might be copycats out there. And then your entire life is going to be about giving up DNA to satisfy every single person. So I guess that if you've made a stand and you're not going to be providing your DNA or taking an allegation um, and, and dealing with it head on, then at least you've created, you know, a very firm understanding of where you stand. So there's two, two different mindsets. You could say, you know, just give him the DNA. And then if you have an innocent conscience, if you have a clear conscience, it's going to prove that you're not uh, the father or the mother. That's one way of looking at it. Or another way of looking at it is that we just cannot respond. We are members of the royal family. This is the monarchy. We can't just respond to every single question out there. Otherwise, we would just be doing that all day because there would be millions of people who come out of the woodwork all wanting a piece of us. And so this is a funny little balance that he's working with. But what he wants, according to this, is to just get it settled and get it right and find out who he is. On the subconscious, we've got the Seven of Cups in reverse. And this is about not falling, not falling for the illusion delusion. Now, I also saw Simon in an interview talking about how he, when he was younger and he was living in Britain, he was um, flying the flag and, and singing the praises of all things Britannia. And he felt a lot of patriotism. But then he joined the military. And I guess this is the UK military. And as he traveled around, he felt that he was learning a lot about a lot of the pain and suffering that um, that Britain had caused around the world or uh, or that it was responsible for. Uh, this is his perception. And so he kind of lost. He felt disillusioned in some way about um, the influence that Britain has had around the world, you know, through the various different generations that I think could be this this. The last interview I saw with him, he actually had the British flag, the Union Jack, as a background. Uh, he was sitting uh, in front of the Union Jack flag, and that looks pretty patriotic to me. He also said that he was really saddened, and his whole family are really saddened by the Queen's passing, but also kind of um, clarified that the reason for that is because if she was his grandmother, he never got to know her. And his children never got to know their great grandmother and things like that. So he seems to, um, I guess, has to have this this realistic melancholy, but also sort of a, a, a sort of a disenchantment or disillusionment and isn't falling for this patriotic kind of vibe anymore because he feels as though somehow he has been um, it's escaped him somehow and that he hasn't he hasn't been treated like a whole person. Uh, that also appears here with the Three of Cups. Um, 
as in the past. And I think these two cups, in fact, all three of the cups, in fact, all four of these, as you can see, all four of these, even though this is not from the cup suite, they all show the same thing. You've got here the cups um, here signify this uh, emotional balance that he's looking for. Here, this is about um, being given false, being led down the garden path rather than being given something real that you can hold on to as part of your identity. This is when he was younger and he just believed, you know, that he's just an ordinary British guy and that he hasn't, he, he didn't know anything. He was happy with his country. He was happy with the things that he was told by his adoptive parents. And it wasn't until his grandmother actually was on her deathbed where he said that he provided her with a picture of, she had hinted numerous times that he came from somewhere that might surprise him and that he has a, a lineage that, um, that she is aware of, but is sworn to secrecy and is not allowed to say. It was on her deathbed that he, after having done a bit of research, showed her a picture of Charles and Camilla and said, are these my parents? And she said, yes. And then shortly after, she passed. And he holds that very tightly as being evidence. I think this might be in the past here, that turning point between believing that it may not be true to being convinced that it might be true and that he wants to know either way. In the short term future, this card depicts how you must be feeling. It's about having an identity crisis, about not fit like, like you're an outsider in the world or an outsider when it comes to your rightful birthright. That's how he feels. He feels as though um, everyone else got to be in the in the family and somehow he's he can see it through the window, but he can't get in. And that's what this card is all about. However, there's also messages when it comes to the short term future. So let's keep an eye open for that. Shall we keep going? All right. So the way he sees himself, the way others see him or the environment in which he sits, hopes and fears. And you see it's another cup suite here as well. And then the final outcome. Very interesting outcome. So the way he sees himself is the page of swords in reverse. This is about malicious slander and gossip. It's about personality disorder and also about a difficult childhood. I think that um, the personality disorder can be also, it doesn't have to be about illness. It can be about... Uh, you know, you look at the one suite, we're talking about intellect and communication. It can be about the messages that you've been given that, that, that form part of your identity, the things that you've, that you've believed, that you've been told, the environment that you've been in that has kind of uh, molded you into who you are and has created your personality. The difficult childhood also would be resolved with this getting things right element of the temperance card. I think he feels, you know, he, he feels as though he, he doesn't know what his identity is. It has made his life difficult. He also, with this malicious gossip and slander, it might be some of the ridicule that he feels about, um, you know, because he would have people who support him, but he'd also have people who don't support him. And I think that he feels that, um, that he's been outcast and and downtrodden and and sort of treated as though he's less of a person and then all of the gossip that goes with it and things like that there is also a possibility that this could be his treatment of someone else as well although because it's the way he sees himself i think he sees himself perhaps as a victim of that malicious gossip and slander rather than anything else when it comes to the way he's viewed by others or the environment in which he sits, you, we have the Ace of Wands in reverse. This is about um, an inappropriate attraction or affair, and it can also be a lack of growth and expansion. I'm really uh, intrigued by the inappropriate attraction or affair. If this is the environment in which he sits, then this would indicate that um, there may have been 
an inappropriate affair that took place between two young people at the time that ultimately resulted in his existence. And when you look at these cards, um, what you see is that dynamic that could have been sparked by that affair. But the, um, the lack of growth and expansion might also be the walls that are put around him where he's not able to, he may not have the money to fight the royals. He may not have that financial support that he needs to be able to keep court cases going. His case may not appear to be strong enough for someone to, for the right kind of legal representation to sort of give him that, um, that hand that he needs to be able to fight what would be an unlimited amount of uh, pushback that he'd receive on the other end. To fight the king in court would be a really tremendous feat and not easy at all. And so that lack of growth and expansion could be the walls that are around him in his environment. But it's interesting that it's this, this card, because this card talks about that inappropriate attraction or affair, which the cards don't like to tease for the sake of entertainment. The cards tend to tell me what the message is in the way that's easiest to understand. So the card has been carefully chosen. What the dynamic shows is a person who ultimately was born to be the patriotic British young boy, but there was something that moved from the past to the present where he feels disillusioned and slighted as though his identity is sort of hanging in the balance. And um, after all of these years he still can't really confirm who he is or he isn't um so hopes and fears here we've got the five of cups and the five of cups is about um sadness loss bereavement uh, pain hurt and you see how joyous his past was he's i think he's afraid of um, of losing there's it could be this being proven wrong element might appear as a fear and also I think this loss and bereavement might be about it, it could be about the outcome if he was to get what he wanted would which would be a DNA test I think it's fear of being wrong and the emotion, emotional turmoil that he would feel because it would prove those people who had sort of been slandering him or had been um, talking about him as though he's some kind of a nut jumping on the royal bandwagon. But I think also there's the fear of sadness here is about if the DNA test was to, if, if he, he, everything is sort of a loss for him. If he gets the DNA test and it proves that he's not, related to the king and queen then I think the sadness and fear of sadness is there and fear of loss is there like he's wasted his time if he doesn't get the DNA test um, that he's looking for then he's never going to know and that's the sadness and the loss of never really knowing who he is and then you have the sadness and loss that um, if, it, if he does get the test results and they prove that he is the rightful heir this loss of a lifetime of uh, not being included in something that he was entitled to by birth. And so I think that this is a fear card because he's kind of headed headed down a path regardless of what happens, um, where it's going to ultimately bring an element of sadness and loss to, and a sense of loss to him. Final outcome is really interesting. And this is the King of Pentacles. The King of Pentacles is a successful male energy who's highly prosperous and has earned this through his own merit, through honourable means. He hasn't had anyone handed to him. And um, and this could end up being a clue to something because it sits here directly beneath his identity. So I want to ask two follow-up questions about this King of Pentacles. Um, I'm going to, oh, I'm getting a, a chill. It's always nice to get a chill. It means something interesting is coming. I want to find out, first of all, whether Simon, if he continues to push, is he going to get his DNA test? Will a court order that DNA test? Because I know that Delphine in Belgium, ultimately, the court ordered 
the DNA test to be conducted. And that's how she won. The royal, the Belgian royal family was fighting against it for years. And then ultimately, she got her DNA test. But um, Delphine already came from money. She had the money to fight. I don't know what Simon's financial situation is, but this is going to be a costly exercise for him. No matter how you, no matter how you look at it. Is he going to get his DNA test? And what I mean by that is a court going to compel that King Charles provide a DNA sample or Queen Camilla or both. We have the star in reverse, the eight of pentacles in reverse. And the Six of Pentacles in reverse. It's a really definitive response. The answer is no, he's not going to get his DNA test. This is a futile, futile exercise. Um, uh, there's a the, the undervalued, stuck in a rut kind of um, aspect that um, just won't allow, it won't allow it to happen. It's just there's going to be walls up. And there's also an element here of um, maneuvering against him. Which would indicate that, you know, the word corruption comes up in this card in reverse. I don't want to use the word corruption because I don't think it's corruption specifically. It's about maneuvering against him. But the futility in this card and the failure in this card is the answer to the question. And these two cards talk about how um, he's just going to be sidelined. They're not going to let him get the DNA test. So, okay, one more question is, um, if he did, what, what would a DNA test prove? Is he the rightful heir of the throne? Let's have a look at what the cards have to say. Ace of Cups, Knight of Cups, and the Seven of Pentacles. This is the ultimate when it comes to um, compassion, relationships, and sense of self. This is his sense of self. Okay. The Knight of Cups is an idealistic, um, romantic energy that can be unrealistic from time to time. And then we have here missed opportunities and um, or disappointment. Now, this reading could go either way. This is the ultimate when it comes to his sense of self. It's a romantic, idealistic view. It could be unrealistic, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it is unrealistic. Remember in a re recent reading, this came up as the third card and I had to put down a fourth. It's because it can go either way. With these cards here, there's a big... He has a big romantic view of who he could be and it cuts to the very core of who he feels he is. This is his entire, his entire identity has been wrapped around this question for the past, I don't know, 10 years or so, maybe 20 years. And, oh, since the 90s, so quite a number of decades actually. Because it was in, I think in 1994 that his grandmother passed away. So uh, it has been quite a number of years, 30 years. So a lot of who he feels he is or could be is wrapped up in this investigation that he's conducting. The disappointment would indicate that he is not. But the missed opportunity would indicate that perhaps he is. So let's put down one more card. And it should provide us, hopefully, fingers crossed, with a definitive This is about going your own way, making your own decisions, 
not falling for the illusion delusion. But there's also this element of um, getting over, confronting your fears and your confusion or overcoming your confusion and trusting your instincts, trusting your feelings. It's a soft, it's a soft yes. It's interesting that it's a soft yes. This overcoming confusion and trusting your feelings and your instincts is, is a message to Simon. He's never going to get his DNA. But you know what? The energies change. So maybe in the current energy, because Charles has just become king. And so he's at his strongest point in time. He is stronger than he will ever be. It could be that Simon, the cards are saying that Simon is not going to get his DNA test in the current energy. But he's an honorable, an, he's an honorable person in his pursuit for the truth. And he should trust his feelings, despite the grandiose romantic nature of it. Because it cuts to the sense of who he is. This is the ultimate when it comes to his sense of self. And that I think this might be the missed opportunity. I think the message here is not so much for Simon, but for Simon's legacy to pass on to his children. In order for him to understand who he is or for his children to understand where they came from, they have the one side of their existence, which comes from their mother, who is an indigenous Australian. But the other side of who they are is uncertain because Simon is uncertain as to who he is. He has an idea, which is a romantic idea, because look, we've got the king here. This is who he believes himself to be. I don't think this is about a disappointing outcome. I don't think this says um, you're not you're not of royal blood. I think this might be the missed opportunity element of this card. about how um, he may not even find out in his lifetime. But this card indicates he should persevere because by the time someone is going to benefit, and it could be his children may benefit, the cards are saying that he should trust his feelings, which is an invitation to carry on. Interesting. So that was Simon Durante Day and whether or not he may be of royal stock. Thank you so much for watching. I love knowing you're here and I'll see you in my dreams.